All right, folks, welcome in. Welcome back. Happy League New Year as day three of NFL free agency uh, is about to wrap up here in a few hours. So it is a live Patriots Beat podcast here on the CLNS Media Network presented by our wonderful friends over at Prize Picks. And it is Brian Hines back, as always, with Alex Barth uh, to get into the first three days for the New England Patriots. And I guess uh, the vent sesh will come a little later with some of the things that maybe aren't going New England's way, but they did have some signings uh, last night after we logged off here and then uh, throughout the day today. So we will start there and we will start last night, which saw some shuffling of the chairs in the Patriots tight end room because Pharaoh Brown departed uh, out West. He is going to the Seattle Seahawks. And, you know, shortly before that was announced, the Patriots got their new tight end too in Austin Hooper, which is a guy we all kind of saw as a natural fit, obvious fit. He spent two years under offensive coordinator, Alex Van Pelt in Cleveland. Um, so uh, Austin Hooper is coming into Foxborough one year, about right over $4 million. And he'll be your number two tight end there to, uh, Hunter Henry. Yeah, they, I mean, it feels like a, a a swap. It feels like they swapped out Pharaoh Brown for Austin Hooper, who obviously has the experience with Alex Van Pelt back in Cleveland, a little bit older, a uh, little bit more of a receiver. Like he can block. He's not quite Mike Gesicki, uh in in yeah. terms of the lack of blocking ability. But we knew he was a logical target. They added him. They're not asking him to come in and save the offense. I wouldn't say. Even if they had gone out and weaponized the offense elsewhere in free agency, I wouldn't say this is a weaponizing the offense signing. This is a filling out the depth chart signing. They needed a second tight end. He's about as good as they're going to do at second tight end. Him or, or Pharaoh Brown, clearly they want a little more reliability and a receiver in that spot, or that's what the, the decision says to me. So that that's Austin Hooper. Like, solid second tight end. I'd still like to see him draft a guy now, like much later in the draft, you know, sixth, seventh round. But if they find a guy they think is an interesting project, you bring him in. I'd like for them to have somebody like that on the roster because Henry is going to be 30 next year. Hooper's entering his age 30 season. Yep. So having a younger option would be nice, but definitely a back burner need at this point. Yeah. Yeah. They're both 29 and they're both, or, or Hooper's a one year deal. So you want to get a project uh, type of player in there. And, I don't know, like he's kind of a similar player as as Henry, right? Like they're not great blockers. Uh, they're not. I think he's a better you know, blocker than he's, Henry. He's definitely a bl- better blocker, but he's not like a you know impact run blocker. So they're still right. They don't have that at the position. He's not that like an explosive guy uh, in the passing game either. But he's a better fit than Mike Kosicki because I think last year like seventy percent of his snaps came with a hand in the dirt as an inline tight end. So. It's a better compliment to Hunter Henry, but yeah, you want to get a, a youth infusion in that room. You want to get a project player, uh, maybe add some more explosiveness if you can, maybe add an impact run blocker. Uh, but yeah, that's push that off to, towards later in the draft. But uh, I will ask you, it was Hooper for one year, about 4.25. Brown was just under four. And the other name that we all were looking at as Diego brings up was Harrison Bryant, which I believe he was like one year, like right in that three and a half million dollar range. So uh, was Hooper at the top of your list out of, out of those three, would you say, or would you have preferred one of one of the other two? I would have brought Pharaoh Brown back personally. I, I think he's a capable enough receiver. And I think his blocking would have been massive in this, in this system. Um, I, I, I honestly, I probably have Hooper third. I would take him Brian. He's a little younger. There's a little more upside, but I don't think the gap between any of them is that massive. If if the biggest issue is that the Patriots went went with tight the end. wrong second yeah. tight end, we'd be sitting pretty right now. There's, I would love to be doing that show right yeah, now. There's more issues, and we'll get to that. But yeah, if the, if the second string tight end was your biggest issue, then then we'd be sitting pretty right now. But uh, that was the remodel of the tight end room. Again, probably expect another uh, body or two in, in that in that room before we kick off, you know, the off season uh, OTAs and training camp and all that. But uh, we then woke up this morning with some positive news because they re-signed Anthony Jennings to a three-year deal. Uh, something we didn't hear anything from Anthony Jennings, like the days and weeks leading up to free agency. And then even the first uh, two days of legal tampering, but they uh, got him to a three-year $12 million deal pretty incentive heavy too it can get up to a max 24 million but uh, just a, a big breakout year for him and he gets rewarded pretty nicely and you know you retain a big 
big piece of your edge edge group there. Yeah, good good signing, good player to keep around. Uh, specifically a fit in their defense, which I think made it always make sense. He's going to come. He would come back early down, sets the edge, great against the run. If they're going to be more aggressive, you you really need somebody reliable setting that edge on their own because instead of having secondary options and run pits behind you those guys are coming with their hair on fire their ears pulled back so i think you might see like a statistical drop off for jennings this year but i still think he's a good signing because his his numbers might drop off a little bit but you're, you're going to see guys like matthew judon guys like josh uche guys like uh sione takitaki be able to do more off of the work that he's doing 100 percent. yep and now you return judon Jennings and Uche, so maybe you can drop that edge. You know, that was a position that we're maybe right. looking in the draft could kind of yeah. That up now here. you don't really need to. Yeah. I, I, it's the same thing as tight end. We're like, if you can get a guy later on who's like a raw project player, uh, you know, outside of top one hundred and fifty, I wouldn't hate making that investment because you don't need him to play this year. But yeah, everybody knows how much I I was into like Mo Kamara, right? And that idea, yeah. still not a bad player, but I just think you have other needs you got to address with that pick at this point. Yep. So good to see him back. Uh, while we're on edges, we can just shout out Josh Uche because uh, yeah. Tom Pelissero reported this morning that he had like two year, $15 million offers, which like 11 million guaranteed. So uh, he really turned down a good amount of money. It, it sounds like to come back here and play under Gerard Mayo and, and, and hope to, you know, have a, have a really good, you know, kind of bet on, bet on himself and have a really good year and hit the market again uh, next year. So shout out. Uche yeah. I for think that. That's part of it. I mean, you know, yeah. hey, look, this team needs to take the victories it can right now and saying, hey, Josh Uche chose to stay here for less money. Definitely pump that up. I understand why they're doing that, you know, and oh, you know, New England was in his heart and yada, yada, yada. Like, I don't blame them for pumping that up. But at the same time, he had 11 and a half sacks two years ago. Last year, he got hurt. Their best pass rusher got hurt. That significantly impacted him. I'm sure he's looking at that in a in a system where they're talking about being more aggressive and saying, I can get back to double digit sacks and I'm gonna hit the market again next year and I'm gonna get a double digit AAV. I, I'm sure that's part of what's going into his calculations. He's entering his age 26 season now. He'll hit the he'll hit the market again at age 27. Definitely young enough to still cash in on a big contract. I do I I would be shocked if that's not part of his calculations. If he really wanted to stay in New England that bad, he, he would have signed for multiple years. Yep. Yep. But um those were the kind of early morning late last night news uh then it was pretty quiet throughout most of the day it seemed like everything was held up on on calvin ridley for the most part in his decision uh the new league year started at 4 p.m and then we got two kind of depth signings that started with defensive lineman armand watts who was with the pittsburgh steelers last week or last year excuse me uh they needed just you know, another body in there. They have some of these intriguing young guys on, on the defensive line with like Sam Roberts and Jeremiah Farms, but it was good to get like some veteran depth in there uh, to replace Lawrence Guy. And and you know he's got kind of that similar space eating body type. He's six five three oh seven, but looks like statistically wise, at least he brings a little bit more in the pass rushing department. He had uh, five sacks two years ago with the Vikings. He had like an eleven percent pressure rate last year. Uh, with, with the Steelers, so maybe he could be uh, an interesting kind of complimentary piece next to Christian Barmore in the middle there, who's going to obviously command a lot of attention. Yeah, uh, well, you mentioned Lawrence Guy in there. I think a guy that's just going to kind of fill in in that rotational role, probably compete with Jeremiah Farms, maybe Daniel Quali for snaps. Uh, I, I don't think that contract necessarily guarantees him. It was It's up to $3 million, right? I don't think even think we got the guaranteed money on it unless i didn't see it when uh, i was driving home i thought they said base value of three i thought i, I saw seen up it. to three um maybe not maybe then uh yeah i definitely haven't seen any guaranteed money on it though yet or the details but um like to me this seems like a guy that is you know fringe roster guy and i get it they needed the depth up front uh yeah callahan has worth up to three million okay so that's not a guy that's guaranteed a roster spot i mean yeah more likely than not, but they needed some depth up front. They need another big body up front. They got a big body up front. Yep. And then a big bo body on the other side of the line, on the interior of the offensive line, uh, Nick Leverett, who was a lineman for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a guard. Uh, we mentioned you know, that a few times, especially talking about Mike Owenu, is whatever position they probably plan to keep Big Mike at, they need – 
depth at the other spots. Uh, sounds like, you know, early reports are they're going to at least try Mike at, at tackle. So you needed some guard depth in there, especially with Cole Strange, kind of a question mark to uh, start the year after that season ending knee injury. So Nick Leverett was, didn't play much last year, but he, he logged over 700 snaps two years ago at, at the left guard spot. Uh, it seems like just from some Bucks reporters that were talking about him, just like a, a real sturdy kind of solid backup can start in a pinch uh, if needed. So just good to get some depth in there. So you don't, you know, you're not looking at Antonio Mafia as your first line of first line of defense there uh, as a depth option. Yeah. A, a little concerning that they sign a guard before tackle and a guy with this kind of starting experience. When you look at Cole Strange's outlook now, now, let me qualify this. I don't think Cole Strange should be locked in as your starting left guard. He struggled at times, is no longer the coaching staff, is no longer the front office that drafted him. There is not that commitment you usually have to a first round pick. But I also, you drafted three guards in the top, or three interior offensive linemen, three guys who can play guard in the top 150 last year. Yeah. I don't think they gave, we still haven't seen them in, I mean, I was just driving home. I just walked in. We didn't get the money on Leverett yet, did we? No, I haven't seen anything. Right, I'm going to imagine it's not a ton of money. Yeah. But it was, it is, one, it's even one worse. Year was, it was one year, right? Was that I didn't quarter? even see the or, years. I didn't I, even uh, see okay, the maybe years. Not then. But I, I'll say that you just drafted three guards in the top 150. Guards should not be your focus, whether you're counting on Cole Strange to start or not. Between City So, Antonio Moffey, Jake Andrews, you should have two starting guards based on where you drafted those guys. You just should. And Mike Onwenu potentially can still play guard too. The attention should be a tackle. And it's not that they can't do multiple things at once, but did, <clears throat> Nick Leverett's a fine player. That's kind of my point. Why is the focus on getting fine players a guard right now? They've hammered guard. They have hammered guard. They should be good there. The fact that they don't think they are is worrisome. Yep. All right, little preview of the rant that that's coming, yeah. I assume. But um, uh, I think that is all these signings, and no one else departed. I don't believe from their internal options. Uh, kind of running out of those. I guys. guess I mean Trey Nixon would be the one they didn't tender uh, him. And Therese Hall, don't forget Therese Hall. Now he didn't get a tender either. And so. Therese Hall, right? Well, I mean, I, he was. I think we knew that the way it was reported initially with Nixon, yeah. it's interesting because they raved about him. Troy Brown had raved about him. And I wonder if that's him saying he wants a chance to go and play elsewhere, or just moving them moving on internally for that mentality. Cause they did really like him last year. The coaching yeah. staff did really like him. So it's, it's just interesting in that regard to see them. And, and maybe they end up signing him again for camp. Like maybe he doesn't get the ERFA deal and they're like, go out, see what else is out there. If you don't find a better situation, right. Offer still on the table, that kind of thing. Um, but I just, I, I do think that's a little bit noteworthy. Yep. So all that's left internally is Trent Brown, who said they're most likely going separate ways unless. Well, I mean, <laughs> the options are running out. Yeah, The options the, are running out at that position. Options. Uh, and then Miles Bryant, who we'll, we'll see Cody Davis, probably a, a retirement candidate at this point. Yeah. And then. Uh, Zeke Elliott, who missed that first wave of all that running back movement. I, I would think Zeke's we, we, them uh, signing Antonio Gibson. I, I can't imagine. Yeah. Imagine Zeke comes back. Yep, I'm with you on that one. So yeah, four internal free agents uh, that are still out there. Uh, again, just mostly some depth signings. A uh, couple nice re-signings. Again, good to see Anthony Jennings back. But another kind of quiet day. Uh, for the Patriots. So we will take a very quick break. We'll hear from our friends over at Prize Picks, and then we will come back with some of the more big news and other things that the Patriots kind of missed out on during the during the day. So first, we'll hear from Prize Picks. Football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up. Whether it's a tournament season or the fight for a playoff home court, there's no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this time of year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. Testing my skills on Prize Picks this season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $1,000 with just a few taps. Prize Picks is really simple to play, and I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 
seconds. Download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Use the code CLNS for the first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right. So the big news of the day, one that we all were kind of waiting on, happened about an hour after the new league year started, was Calvin Ridley, a wide receiver who the Patriots had a lot of interest in over these past few days. A mystery team won out. Uh, they prevailed. It was the Tennessee Titans. They steal another veteran wide receiver from the Patriots. Titans and old out. receivers. Yeah. And they uh, snag Calvin Ridley for a four-year, $92 million deal with $50 million. Uh, guaranteed big number for you know almost a 30 year old receiver i don't know i kind of thought of our conversation last night where it's like if you're gonna pay a receiver this much money you might as well try to go get you know the the t higgins or the brandon iu can pay those guys that type of money but uh, they do miss out on calvin ridley and now free agent market at that position is pretty barren so you're probably looking uh, to the draft or if they do want to get aggressive and, and maybe swing one of those trades yeah, they got to figure something out. Look, th- this is where they're at right now. Coming into the offseason, there's three big needs, right? Quarterback, receiver, tackle. And cor- quarterback was never going to get solved and free. I, Justin Fields, uh, who, who else did people want? Um, Baker, Justin, but that was... Right, Baker, maybe. It, it, that was always going to be solved through the draft. Always. So you left with the receiver and tackle. They needed to go into the draft with one of those two filled in free agency. I actually don't mind them. I, I'm going to kind of skip around the order here, Brian. I apologize, but just for the complete day. Go for it. I don't mind them missing on Calvin Ridley. This is an absurd yeah. deal. This is the Titans overcompensating for not giving A.J. Brown this deal two years ago like they should have. Don't get me wrong. The Titans are losers here. The Titans are losers here just like the Patriots. The real miss is not getting... Uh, um. Jonah Williams. That's the yeah. I I am so okay that they passed on Calvin Ridley and it has nothing to do with defending the team or you know not wanting to spend like Belichick or the Pack away or anything like that. At a certain point, like T Higgins is going to command close to this. I would think. Well, not not now, but this is about the T Higgins ballpark. If I'm going to pay that kind of money, I'll trade 34. I'll go get T Higgins or Brandon Ayuk <laughs> if that's more your speed. Like. This is what those guys are going to cost. They're much younger. They're better players. I have no problem with them missing on this. The problem is you miss on this. You miss on Jonah Williams. We'll see. And and, and they're not done yet, but you're now looking at like Tyron Smith. After him, there's really no more answers at tackle. Are you calling Trent Brown? That's starting to become an actual take that maybe they should call Trent Brown. And I'm not saying it would be a good move, but you're getting to the point where you need a left tackle. They don't have a left tackle on the Andrew Stuber, I guess is the closest thing they have to a left tackle on the roster. Or, you know, or you go, if you, 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 you miss on some of the wide, yeah, Chucks gives me Marshall Newhouse vibes, probably yeah. a fine right tackle should not be playing left. You go, or do you go the wide receiver out? But now you have to give up draft capital and I'm okay. Giving up 34 for T Higgins. If it gets to that point, because realistically, the receiver you're drafting at 34 is not going to be better than T Higgins, but you only have so many assets to go around and you needed to at least bridge these positions. You didn't need to solve them long-term, but you needed to at least bridge these positions. If they go into the draft with quarterback tackle and receiver, all completely unfilled, they it's almost impressive to do that with the amount of resources they have at their disposal and not get any of those questions answered. Because you're not going to be able to fill them all in the draft. I know we all think this is a deep wide receiver draft, and it is. But you're not going to be able to get the kind of receiver we're talking about in the third round. You might be able to get him in the second, but you're certainly not getting a tackle in the third. You certainly, and, and so now, are you putting Drake May back there behind a turnstile left tackle? Are you putting Jane Daniels out there without any true coverage dictating wide receivers around him? Like, they're talking about... I, I see now they're interested in, in Tyler Boyd, who's like a fine complimentary wide receiver. I think he's like a slightly worse Jacoby Myers. I don't think signing Tyler Boyd at this point does anything. They're just going to be log jammed where they've been the last couple of years, where they have a bunch of okay to good number two receivers that teams just kind of cover chalk across the board. And 
unless you play a team that just doesn't have a deep secondary, you're not really going to have a chance. You're not going to be able to out scheme anything with guys like that. So <clears throat> could they still trade for T Higgins? Yes. Could they still trade for Tyron Smith? Yes. But the, uh, they are running out of options and the options remaining on the table are getting more expensive. And it's just getting frustrating because they, they didn't need to do that much in free agency. They really didn't. If they check off Williams, one of those say, boxes, right. <laughs> if they had signed Jonah Williams, say, I think people still would have been annoyed about Calvin Ridley. I'd be on here saying, don't worry about it. They're fine. Yeah. They're great. Now we're going quarterback at three. Let's see what 34 is either. You trade for Higgins. You pick a guy there, maybe even move up. And all right, Jonah Williams and Mike Owen are your tackles. Not perfect, but okay. Like you can get through a year with that. And then, yeah, you're going to have a rookie quarterback throwing a rookie receiver. Not ideal, but you hope they build together. Like that's, it's it was that easy to just get to. Again, I've pushed back on this a lot. They were not going to be able to fill all three needs in one offseason. And I still believe that. I still think that's an unfair expectation. Filling one with a veteran was a fair expectation. Rome was not built in a day, but there was a first day they started building. And that's kind of where we're at with it with them at this point. There's still moves they can make. So I'm not totally closing the book yet. But Jonah Williams was such an easy answer. And right now there's not, you you already saw it with receiver, the, the Josina Anderson report that said, yeah, they're just, you know, they're going to turn their attention to the draft. They, they're they out on Ridley. And I know that's conflicting with some other reports that are out there, but I looked at that and I said, great. They're going to, we talked about this last night. Take the money that you're going to pay Jonah Williams or that you're going to pay Calvin Ridley. Put that on top of your offer to Jonah Williams, which was a two years, 30 million, 19 guaranteed, very doable for a starting tackle. Take some of that Calvin Ridley money, put it on Jonah Williams, and now go nail the draft. Go take, you know, three receivers with your next five picks after taking that quarterback third overall. Now I look at it and I wonder if they're going to shift to, they just don't want to pay any of these guys and they don't want to invest in players, especially players they don't believe are top tier without knowing what their core is. And do you punt on this offseason and truly begin the rebuild in the draft, which I think would be a missed opportunity? Because, well, this is not a great free agency class. It is not. There were players that could have helped them. Yeah. And I think writing that off in tight, and I'm not I'm not on the same boat as Felger where you have to be competitive. Like, you need to do everything you can to win in 2024. I'm not there. But also you do, especially if you draft a quarterback, you need at least a functional offense around him. You don't need the 07 Patriots, but this is what happened with Mac Jones. And so now I look at it and I almost wonder if they don't make any of these moves in free agency and the rebuild truly begins in at the end of April with the draft. At that point, is it a true teardown? And do you trade down from three? And do you stockpile picks and draft Joe Alt and the next year trade up for the quarterback or whatever? Like that's suddenly becoming a much more realistic option because i've been sitting here say like, red in the face qb at three qb at three qb at three i assume that guy was going to either have his blind side protected or have a true number one receiver to throw to if he's not going to have either of those it becomes a lot tougher to justify that pick yeah yeah i agree with you like i think we all <clears throat> excuse me we wanted calvin ridley right and we would have celebrated that to get a solid veteran kind of in the room for your rookie quarterback now paying him 92 million dollars over four years i think we're kind of you know go with that say tennessee can can take that problem but now you know i i tweeted it out right after like go put that money into the offensive tackle market which still right. had jonah williams at the time tyron smith is still out there so we'll see and then take a quarterback you have your stopgap offensive tackle and then you can get aggressive with that 34 pick whether a receiver falls to you there, whether you want to trade it for a T Higgins, or maybe you want to move up and get really aggressive and go get AD Mitchell or Brian Thomas. If one of these rookie falls, and then you kind of have the makings uh, like you hope your, your two rookies can fill two of those holes. And then Jonah Williams or Tyron Smith can hold down the left tackle spot. And then you can attack that in the draft, you know, in the future with your first round pick. But then Jonah Williams flies off the board on a, on a reasonable deal that, the Patriots definitely could have, you know, matched or gone higher with all this cap space they have. And, and now you're just kind of looking at it like, like what's left. Like we'll see Tyron Smith. Um, but as you said, the market's pretty bare after that. It's like Josh Jones, um, Yos, 
Yosh, I don't, I don't know how to say his last name. Is it Nijman from, from Green Bay? Like he's a decent young player, but it's like, are you trusting these guys to come in and, and start day one at left tackle and protect your franchise rookie quarterback that you picked number three overall? So, yeah, I, I, I mean, that's just, again, if you don't have the infrastructure in place, I, it's, Again, I, I get they want to build and draft and develop and do it methodically, yeah. but if a hundred million dollars in cap space in the third overall pick, you can't start with that. What can you start with? That's that's just where I'm at with it. So, I, I, again, if they sign Tyron Smith, this whole thing changes. If they sign Tyron Smith or they they trade for T Higgins, the whole thing changes. But it's just based on the moves that they've made. It doesn't say, and, and the other reports we're hearing, those don't seem like they're going to happen. And, and you compound with the fact that you had, you know, we're going to burn cash in that comment. And you had Elliot Wolf tell Patriots.com that, yes, it's draft and develop, but when you have a hundred million dollars in cap space, you make moves. You have comments like that. It is kind of Red Sox-ish. And it's. Full throttle-esque. <laughs> the bridge needs to go to somewhere. And you got to start, if it's a bridge, you're fine. You got to start building the bridge. You have to start building the bridge. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree with you. Like it's it's going to be a multi-year kind of rebuild, right? They're not probably competing for the Super Bowl this year, even if they nail nail the draft. But you got to start got to start hitting some singles. And as you said, you know, build that bridge. And it's just, it's just not happening right now. They're not. They just have all this money uh, and they're missing out on, again, it's not a great free agency class, but the guys they need and the guys that can help them, they are, they are kind of missing out on it. I, I, I see some other names in the chat, like David Bakhtiari for left tackle. He doesn't have a knee. Uh, I, I'm good with him. This is actually a, an interesting one though, because Mike Williams was released today. So any interest in him kind of being, you know, maybe it's a one or two year approve it deal. He could come in and be your ex receiver. And now, okay, maybe now the tackle is the focus with the pick 34, and then you can add one of these secondary receivers in the third round. So any interest in, in Mike Williams, who was again released from uh, LA I mean, I, I know I just said that whole thing about, you know, they need to get aggressive and get a receiver, and and, and I'm going to say no on Mike Williams, but I, if your two best receivers are both coming off torn ACLs, that's just, that's not a good situation because Kendrick Bourne's going to be a factor too. So I because of the injury, I have to say no. If Keenan Allen had gotten cut, I'd have been very interested, or I would have traded even maybe for Keenan Allen a day three pick. I, I can't get excited about Mike Williams. I can't just because it's it's too many. You have him, you have Juju's coming off torn ACL, you have you have Bourne's coming off torn ACL. Juju already has a knee problem. Pop Douglas is undersized. Like, no, you need somebody much more reliable in that room. Yep. And then uh two other names. Tyler Boyd, we kind of talked about him. Just seems like another one of those you know, kind of guys that are, would be there with Kendrick Bourne and Michael Thomas. Right. I just, I'm, I'm good on Michael. Michael Thomas, Thomas is I, the NFL should be done. Yeah. With uh, Michael Thomas. Uh, at this point. I'm good on that. Uh, yeah. The only I floated, I, I posted on Twitter. Like I would take like Josh Reynolds. I know that's not light in the world on fire. And he's kind of not just another one of those number two, number three, but he's kind of an X body type. If you could get him in, you know, if you're not taking one of these big swains, I wouldn't mind adding him. And then, Still, you have to get aggressive with that number 34 pick, but I'm good on Tyler Boyd, really. I'm definitely good on um, who are we just saying? My- Michael Thomas, Slant Man. Yeah, uh, I- I'm good with them there, but um, so yeah, that's pretty much where we're at, I believe. Uh, I don't know anything besides those, obviously, tons of focus on the receiver and offensive tackle positions, but anything else you think they should kind of look at here over the next few days or any specific player that's still lurking out there that, that kind of has your, your interest. I still had Stefan Gilmore. That's just the one I keep going back to. Like the fact he hasn't gotten paid yet tells me the offer's not on the table. Go again. They have still like 67 million in cap space. And they, they, here, here's what I worry about. You have to get to the floor. So they're going to have to spend it at some point And you don't want to get to a point where, there's no good players available and you have to throw good money after bad because you have to get to that floor. And 
I, I'm pretty sure even extending Christian Barmore wouldn't help them because that wouldn't kick in until next year. Uh, well, they'd get the portion of the signing bonus added okay. on this year's. So maybe you get Christian Barmore's yeah. entire extensions a signing bonus. Then. I don't know, <laughs> but you, they do it to pay guys. They do have to pay guys, and you don't want to be put in a spot where you have to overpay players to get to that cap floor who aren't good players. So, I, do throw throw Stefan Gilmore thirteen fourteen million dollars at this point. Yeah, do something like that. Go throw Tyron Smith the money. Go get T Higgins and give him a con. Like they have to pay somebody, right? Yeah, I mean, what what was uh, uh, Jonah Williams two for thirty, right? So like, I mean, they should have done that in the first place, or even added a little money on top of that. So like, go throw that at, at, at Tyron Smith. Even you know, overpay if you're gonna overpay someone. If you have to overpay someone, at least overpay like the good players that are still out there and that will fill a position of need and, and help you. Uh, help you moving forward so uh we'll, we'll see what happens with there uh speaking of corners we did get a little news uh with jc jackson that there was some mutual interest uh in, in a return there despite him being released earlier this off season that's something we've kind of talked about kind of talked about that with like a similar type of uh situation with tradavius white like maybe if you're after the draft and you really didn't get a solid player to fill that second boundary corner or you need a little bit more corner depth maybe you bring in you know a guy like jc or a guy like trey white who has some question marks uh, you obviously hope jc is getting you know the attention and, and the help he needs off the field but if he you know kind of checks those boxes maybe he comes back on on just a one-year type of flyer there uh later in the offseason it's got to be a flyer i just i look i i hope the guy's doing better and obviously you know mental health concerns are serious but can you count on him? And I just don't think you can bring him in on anything more than a pure prove a deal. He's not an answer at second boundary corner. Like he's just not, you, you do anything you get from him is a bonus. And given the way it happened, like given everything that happened last year, and it seemed like there were issues that spun out around that within the locker room. It just, it seems risky. It, it, if you're giving him no money, I guess whatever, but bringing him back just feels very risky. Yep. Uh, Savian Howard, I'd say, is kind of in that same boat. He's on the older side. Um, so I don't know. I, I think they could do better. On, honestly, like I'd rather just see what Alex Austin and Isaiah Bolden have than like Xavier and Howard. But yeah. I, I mean again, I'd bring him into camp on a flyer. I'd probably rather sign Xavier Howard than J uh Jay-Z Jackson. Yeah. But bring him into camp on a flyer. See, I, I have no problem putting a veteran in that group, but again, you have to spend the money. They have to get to that cap floor. Go sign Stefan Gilmore or one of those other. I'm out on Trey White. I, again, I just think the injuries are, um, it's too much. He's been too hurt. And he's another guy. I think there's reliability issues, but go pay Kendall Fuller. I don't think Kendall Fuller, right? Signed, right? No, I think he's still out there. Go sign Kendall Fuller. Go sign Steph Gilmore. Go sign Steven Nelson. Like go sign one of those guys, Justin Simmons. I would still love if they I would still Justin love Simmons. Justin Simmons. I actually forgot that he hadn't signed yet. Go, yeah. So there's still moves for them to make. Now we're talking about defense, which I think they're in yeah. good shape on defense. <laughs> but again, you got to spend the money. You, they have to spend the money at some point, and you got to do it before all the good players are gone. Yep. Uh, back offense. DJ Humphreys got released today. He's a tackle, but he blew out his knee at the end of the year, didn't he? So I don't know uh, how they would view that that's yeah, he, probably not his ACL a, not, in January that feels yeah. I put him in the minimum the money camp, he okay, where he's yeah. At. yeah he's not an answer I wouldn't say he's an answer he could be but he's not an answer at left tackle not like oh we signed you know we signed Tyler DJ Smith, or, right but I was gonna say it's not like all right you know we signed DJ Humphreys we're done we have our tackle it's not he, he wouldn't fit in that category <clears throat> yep um more names coming in. Hunter Renfro, he was released today. I just he's washed. Kind of probably fits washed in that like a dish. Just more number three wide receivers, right? And you have your inside guys. You have Pop and you have Kendrick Bourne. So uh, yeah, Patriots fans are obsessed with Hunter Renfro. I'd say I don't get why, but I get why. I just he's <laughs> he hasn't been good. He was even when he was at his peak, I thought he was overrated, and he hasn't been good in a long time. If Josh McDaniels can't get something out of you, you're a prototypical shifty slot receiver and Josh McDaniels can't get something out of you. And forget this year when, when he got fired last year, 36 catches for 300 yards in 10 games. 
Like, I just think his his it, it's behind him at this point. You're not getting what you think you're getting in Hunter Renfro. <clears throat> yep, agree with you there. But, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Unless, I mean, do you want to take some questions or a few names? Just if you guys yeah, I mean, we can keep names going through names, there, I guess. Or David you... Bakhtiari, again, like, he hasn't been healthy in two years. Yeah. He's and not he's an played, what, 15 games in the last three years? So I wouldn't be surprised if they signed him, but he's got to be a flyer. He's not an answer at left tackle. And at a certain point, maybe they stack up enough of these what-if guys, and you have Bakhtiari, you, hit on you one have of them. Humphreys, <laughs> and you put o- o- Okorafor out there, and you hope between the three of them you get to 17 games. But that's kind of what they did last year with, Calvin Anderson and Riley Reef and Vidarian Lowe. You're just changing the names. It's the same plan. They're just different names at that point. Yep. Um, yeah, Chase Young, sure. I would take Chase Young. I think he's doing visits. So that's a sign his market isn't nearly what he expected. I don't know. I, I mean, you got to have snaps for guys. I'm not going to turn away the talent, but between him, Uche, Jennings, Judon, it just feels like his. Everybody going to get on the field. I feel like that's either tough sell to him or pissing off Josh Uche, which you don't really need to do at this point, uh, you know, piss off an agent. So I'm not going to say no. It would just be interesting to see what that looks like. Yep. Um, I mean, you kind of touched on this, but kind of early. But if we want to, you know, maybe go to a little draft talk here, does – What's happened the last three days change your opinion on what you do with the number three overall pick, or are you still quarterback? Like, are you still well? Look, if, if they don't have a tackle or receiver, it becomes a lot harder to justify. I'm not saying you necessarily don't do it, but what did we just learn with Mac Jones? If you put a guy out there and you can't protect him, he's going to get sped up, and guys don't recover from that. And you compound that with not having people to throw to, and you potentially create an ugly situation. I know people have said they don't want to take a quarterback because they want to wait till it's a better situation. I was pounding the table for quarterback, assuming that there would be a Jonah Williams or Tyron Smith on the roster, and there would they would be upgrades at wide receiver, and there haven't been. I wouldn't pick a three if I'm not taking a quarterback. I would trade back because at this point, if this is what you're doing, you're talking about a long-term three- to four-year rebuild you need to accumulate assets. I would move back, take either Joe Alt or Olu Fashanu, depending on how far you move back. And then, yeah, and then we start talking about Quinn Ewers and we start talking about Shadur Sanders and do they have Carson the ammunition Nets. to move up where they need to move up next year? I, they need, so, you got to have some mobility, I think, to play in the, in the modern game. Carson Beck's the first overall pick like 15 years ago. <laughs> I just, I wonder if he's mobile enough to justify that. And again, like Quinn Ewers isn't the most mobile guy, but he can scoot when he needs to scoot. Right. I just Beck, maybe it changes, maybe because he still has another year. It's early to talk about the stuff. Maybe Beck comes out next year and he's just, you know, diming it. He's just putting it on guys constantly. And it's like, all right, his arm is so elite that we're going to make it work with him as a pocket passer. But I'm going to need to see that before I put him in that conversation. You want you want to pull up the 2025 quarterback big board? You want to do this, Brian? <laughs> Somebody clip it. We we are looking at 2025, 2025 uh, quarterbacks, uh, 9, 10 p.m., March 13th, 2024. I'm still picking uh, one at three right now, but I, I guess we can do it. I still on, probably am, but I, I, I just... three of free agency with not much to talk about here. <laughs> right. I think we're, we're probably talking about Cam Ward. Shadur Sanders and Quinn Ewers. I'm not super into Riley Leonard. Uh, I'm not super into Curtis Rourke in terms of franchise potential. Jaden Daniels from Kansas is an interesting player, but he's not big. I don't know that he's built for the NFL. You have Carson Beck, you have Will Howard, who are kind of similar guys. I used to like KJ Jefferson. He fell off last year. Cam Rising's a college quarterback. Cade Klubnick, there's no way he's coming out next year. Drew Aller sucks. That whole thing didn't work. Uh, Kyle McCord sucks. That whole thing didn't work. <laughs> you want Jackson Dart? Is Jalen Milrow going to have a Jaden Daniels type of ascension? Like, this is what we're talking about. Hmm. Yucky. Yeah, I, I'm right. still... So, yeah, <laughs> I'm still taking one where we stay. Yeah, I'll now. give you one name we're not going to discuss. Arch Manning's a bust as a college player. I'll tell you that right now. I Texas he, had a chance to play him last year. <laughs> They they were no because Texas had a chance to play him last year. They were 
they were a, a playoff. I mean, they made the playoffs, but like they're in the hunt for a playoff team to be a playoff team. They lose their all American esque starting quarterback. You have this supposed great five-star recruit. You have a chance to save your season. And what do they do? They turn to the other guy whose name is, is escaping me right now. Uh, they turn to Malik Murphy. Yeah. Who I, uh, Malik Murphy's, I mean, not a bad player, four-star recruit. Like I don't want to dump on Malik Murphy here, but if Arch Manning's this generational player, you're trying to win a championship. You need a quarterback. Wouldn't you go to him? Wouldn't it make sense if he's that good to go to him? I'm a big believer in teams tell you the most about their quarterback. I said it when the Niners traded up to take Trey Lance, that they didn't believe in Jimmy Garoppolo. That's all you need to know that Jimmy Garoppolo isn't that good, that the Niners felt like they had to make that trade to move on from Jimmy Garoppolo. If Texas actually believed in Arch Manning truly to the level that he's believed in externally, I think he would have gotten a shot. And people talk to me about eligibility or whatever. He's going to the draft as soon as he can. Don't worry about eligibility. He's not taking a COVID year. He's not taking a fifth year. I, I'm I'm not a believer in Arch Manning. Although the Patriots having Arch Manning throwing to Marvin Harrison Jr. Marvin would Harrison. be objectively <laughs> hilarious. I, I will say that. That would be funny. That would be funny. But um, yeah, so there's your 2025 uh, early. Well, Arch early Manning's 26. 26 your 2025 and 2026 way too early uh a quarterback for you you, you want to talk 26 you want to talk 26 <laughs> it's dante Moore and malachi nelson those are and and right. i there were some guys i said in 2025 who will probably wait another year but um who, who i forget even who i said from last year who will probably wait another year oh they have graham hurts in 2025 went away you want graham hurts brian mertz I've watched enough Graham Mertz at, at yeah, my, in my go. life. I had to get, uh, cause it was the Elliot Wolf talking about talky talky back when they were in Cleveland and he was hyping up that, the BY the game or the talky talky was on BYU and Wolf was hyping up the game he played against Wisconsin. Yeah. And of course Taylor has to go back and clip it. So I was forced to watch Alex Hornibrook again in, in the Wisconsin <laughs> era. And I'm like, I, I thought I was over this. I never had to see Alex Hornibrook in my life again, but, but there it was. So that was a nice flashback flashback to hell there. But so well, yeah, I, um, I'm good on. I'm no, but on honestly, that, that's all kind of tongue in cheek, but I would say that if they miss, if they end up missing on Tyron Smith, they end up missing a tackle. They end up missing at receiver. I would seriously start to reconsider quarterback at three. Cause I, unless, unless you know, going in committed, we're going to sit him for a year. Jacoby Brissett's going to start. If he gets hurt, Bailey Zappi going to step in. If Bailey Zappi gets hurt, it's going to be Nathan Rourke, right? Unless you go in knowing that in which eh, it's a, a really puzzling thing to do with the third pick. That's a full on tank. When you say we're going to use a third pick on a guy and he's not going to see the field. Unless you're going to do that, there still is an argument to take a quarterback, and we basically just did it. These are your options now. How do you feel about your options next year? And by the way, the board usually only gets smaller. The Jaden Daniels are rare. Usually it's it's more guys that you think are high pick. It's oh, more wow. guys like K.J. Jefferson, who at this time last year, K.J. Jefferson was a projected first-round pick at Arkansas. Now he's a transfer quarterback at UCF, projected to go on day three, right? It's more guys like Sam Hartman, who at one point was a projected first-round pick. Devin Leary. Phil Dracovic, who's now a tight end. There's more of those guys than there is Jaden Daniels. So the board generally only shrinks. doesn't usually grow. And even if there are guys that rise, there's more guys that fall than rise. Yep. All right. Let's, we good to wrap it up there or any other events you got before we, before we log um, off? I think we, I don't corner me into saying, no, I don't want a quarterback. All I'm saying is it's, there's that, that pick gets a lot more complicated now. Yeah, that's that's all I'm saying is I think there's at more this, of an argument at this moment. At, there's right. Still and I'm still, time. there's still time. Let's see what they do. But at this moment, maybe. And I'm still if you don't take a quarterback trade down and trade, I, yep. I wouldn't take Michael Penix in the second round. I wouldn't take JJ McCarthy Bonix in the second round. I wouldn't even take Spencer Rattler in the third round at this. If this is what you're going to do, if you were just going to hammer building the roster and you're going to try to be the Niners, you either add the quarterback first, or you add the quarterback last in terms of the draft. Right, and you put bridge pieces around the quarterback if you add him first. Go, go, get your tackle. Get a couple wide receivers. Get a stud defensive player. I can wait on you. You want to take, you want to take Devin Leary in the sixth or seventh round. Be my guest. Right, we've talked about this on the show. Quarterbacks, either take them first or you take them last. And if that's what they're going to do, 
I just hope they commit to it. Yep. Yep. So we'll see, but we can wrap it up there. We'll be back uh, tomorrow night. Hopefully we have more uh, stuff to talk about and better stuff tomorrow. Let's log on here tomorrow. And we, we got a left tackle. We have Tyron Smith under contract. Uh, maybe we have a clear path to using that 34 pick on, on a receiver and a trade or, you know, one of these stud uh, rookies in the draft. Let's have better vibes tomorrow, uh, hopefully, but time will tell. But uh, make sure you subscribe. Here's the last one. Joe Milton, a quarterback, at least it'll be exciting. That's very true. <laughs> hey, we'll have a quarterback with some arm strength, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. So we will be back tomorrow again. Hopefully the vibes are better and the vibes are improved, but make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. So you do know what time we're going to go live. You can also follow Alex on Twitter at real Alex Barth, follow myself on Twitter at I am Brian Hines. We'll let you know as well when we're going live and we'll update you throughout the day. Of course, on any breaking Patriots news, uh, if you need any reading before you go to sleep tonight, you can head over to 985thesportshub.com and read all of Alex's written work about the Patriots free agency. And you can head over to patspulpit.com to read my written work from the first three days of free agency as well. Thank you all, as always, for tuning in with us late here tonight, and we will see you guys tomorrow.